to add anything. Thank you, Margaret, for jumping in and sharing your position. Um, super excited to chat with you all today. Um, I'm Margaret. I'm a partnership manager with Skillstruck. I'll share a little bit more about myself in just a moment, but excited to talk to you all about computer science and specifically computer science in the elementary space today. Um, thank you so much for joining. I know it is a Friday morning um, and, you know, hopefully everybody's gearing up for an awesome weekend, but I promise we'll have fun today. I'll share a little bit, but also don't want to be talking at you the entire time. So we'll have some exploratory time at the end here. Um, so you guys can jump in and explore some of the resources that our company offers and just play around and have some fun as well. So first things first, just wanted to share our slides for today. So you should be able to access them by going to this shortened URL here. I'll also send the link in the chat if you want to click into them that way as well. There are some things linked into the slides that will be helpful to access. Totally not required though or necessary, especially at first. I'll share any links you need in um, real time in the chat here. Um, and also wanted to note that my teammate Margie is here. Margie is born and raised in New York, so I'm super excited to have her on. She's super excited to join. Um, she's a customer success manager for our company, Skillstruck, and she is just wonderful. So thank you, Margie. Um, she'll also be moderating the chat a little bit for anything that I miss. So if you have questions, comments, anything to share, you're welcome to send it in the chat and myself or Margie or both of us will address that for you. Thank you, Adam, for sharing a little bit about yourself too. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. So as I introduce myself, I would love to learn a little bit more about all of you. It looks like we have about 26 people on today, which is awesome. Thank you so much again for coming. Um, feel free to toss your position, district, and then also if you would like to, your favorite fall activity or tradition. Um, I love fall. It's my favorite season of all time, and I love just everything fall. So would love to hear about any fun things that you guys do. Yay, Deanne, thank you so much for joining as well. Appreciate it. Deanne uses Skillstruck in her classroom with some of her students. So thanks so much for joining, Deanne. Um, like Margie said, if anyone has any questions, feel free to let her know. Thank you guys so much for sending in the grade levels you work with, your districts. Awesome. Going apple picking in a couple weekends. So, so excited that some of you guys are doing that too. It's my favorite thing as well. Awesome. Definitely seeing some familiar school districts and even names. Thank you all for coming. Awesome. Well, as you guys throw um, your information in the chat, I'll just share a little bit about myself. So my name is Margaret, like I mentioned. I'm a partnership manager with Skillstruck. Um, I cover our Midwestern states and then also New York and New Jersey. Um, so super excited to talk to you guys today. I was born and raised in the Chicago suburbs, um, and then I went on to study elementary and ESL and bilingual education at University of Illinois down in Champaign-Urbana. And then from there, I went on to teach fourth grade just for a few years. Um, all of my years of teaching were pandemic years, which was super fun. So my, my first year was the 1920 school year, which is obviously kind of crazy. So it felt like a little bit more than just three years. Um, but I taught in the suburbs of Chicago in a city called Wooddale, which is right near O'Hare Airport, if you've ever flown into Chicago, probably flew into O'Hare. Um, so you've probably been very close by. Now I'm just 100% a teacher advocate. I love working with educators, administrators, sharing about our products and tools that we have with our company Skillstruck, and just connecting with people um, to help you all build out some great computer science pathways and experiences for your students. So thank you all for joining me today. I will share, of course, my contact information, everything at the end of our session. If you're curious about reconnecting, um, I am happy to connect with anybody at any time. Also wanted to throw it out there, I'll be visiting New York a couple times in October for some different model schools conferences and smaller events and things like that. Um, so if you see me, recognize me, please come say hi. 
will also be at NYSKATE. So I would love to see and connect with any of you there as well. We'll have a booth um, and I would just love to connect with any of you in person. Just taking a look at the chat here. Apple picking seems like it is the main activity that people are loving in the fall. That's my favorite too. Corn mazes. Awesome. Great. Well, I see that most of you guys are working with elementary grade levels, which is wonderful. That's what we'll focus on today. Um, but also just so you know, our resources with Skillshark are full K through 12. So if you work with any secondary students or connect with any educators or administrators interested in secondary resources, we have that as well. Happy to share more about that anytime. All right, so before we jump in to some different activities and tips for engaging elementary students in computer science, I just wanted to talk through some of the most common challenges that we often see when we work with districts on creating those K through 12 pathways or especially those elementary pathways with computer science. First, computer science is very, very new to many teachers. Um, the vast majority of the teachers that we work with are a little bit newer to computer science. Um, and we know that it can be really intimidating. Computer science kind of has this like unfortunate stigma that it's really difficult or that it's not for everybody. And that can be kind of hard to overcome. With that, we know that it's hard to adopt and integrate something new into the classroom, um, especially in the elementary space. Like I said, I taught elementary school. My teammate Margie is a former teacher as well. We know that finding the time and space, especially in grades K through five, is not always easy. Um, it's hard to add one more thing. We also know there's a lot on elementary teachers' plates and a lot of tools out there. So sometimes that can get even overwhelming it within itself. With that, um, the over gamification and lack of rigor can sometimes be uh, troublesome to balance. So we try and help districts find like that healthy balance between a gamified approach that's engaging, but also making sure students understand the meaning behind what they're doing when they're coding and learning computer science. Um, and going along with that, support is really big for us at Skillstruck. We know that's really crucial when building out these computer science pathways. Um, PD, of course, is important, but we really also focus on ongoing support, and we know that that is a really crucial part of your journey with computer science. These last two kind of go together. Um, I know Edlaw 2D is super important, of course, in New York. Um, we have an Erie One BOCES contract that ensures that we're all set with all of those laws and agreements and things like that, which is really great, but we know that sometimes it can be hard to find the right tools or enough tools that are compliant um, and also designed with all students in mind, right? Accessibility, language, things like that are very important, especially in the elementary levels where students have a lot of different needs and are oftentimes at a lot of different levels, even just within one class at one specific grade level. All right, so just a few objectives for today. Like I said, I don't want to talk at you the whole time, I want this to be interactive. Please feel free to use the chat. But just a few things that we'll cover today. We'll talk through different ways to successfully integrate CS and technology in general into your elementary classrooms. I'll help you become familiar with a few different helpful resources, tools, even just ideas to start engaging your students at an earlier age. And then, of course, we'll collaborate with one, one another share out any challenges, ideas, experiences that you've had so far with computer science, and of course, share your own ideas and different things that have worked for you so far in this, with the students that you work with. All right, so I wanna pose this question. Please feel free to type in the chat with any responses. What do you all feel is the importance of exposing students to computer science at such an early age? in the elementary space? Why do we feel this is important? Why is it crucial? Um, or maybe you're not really sure yet. And we'll go over some of the different reasons that we often focus on. But please take a moment to just think about this, throw your thoughts in the chat, or even just take some time to think through it yourself. Critical thinking and problem solving, absolutely. Part of our daily lives in one way or another, definitely, especially in this day and age, right? Technology is just such a massive part of our day-to-day -day lives, whether we like it or not, 
it's pretty much involved in everything that we do, even in school. Different skills, different ways of thinking and problem solving. Absolutely. When students are at a young age, they're not so scared about it. Yes, I love that, Deanne. Introducing to them at an earlier age before they have any like stigmas or thoughts in their mind about what computer science is and who it's for. They can do computer science when they're older. Yes, setting them up for success down the road. This is amazing. Already exposed to technology. Yep, appropriate use, definitely, right? We want to teach students how to be good digital citizens, and that includes introducing them to how technology works in general, using it safely. Yeah, these are all so amazing. Thank you guys for sharing. You touched on so many of the things that I have on a, a longer list here of different reasons for why we feel passionate about introducing computer science early on. Yes, keep them coming too. These are also great in the chat. Hands-on learning, connecting into new interests. Yeah, right? Just exposing them to what's out there, giving them a safe environment to play and explore, making it enjoyable. You have that engagement piece, right? It's so, so important. And just STEM in general. I feel like students are oftentimes super engaged when STEM or hands-on activities and learning are involved. Wonderful. Thank you all for sharing. Please feel free to keep adding to the chat. This is a list that oftentimes we talk about with Skillstruck. Um, a lot of these things you guys already touched on. Um, this first one is something that I often bring up with districts, especially because I taught fourth grade, this like cool, not cool phase that students oftentimes cross over from one side to the other in elementary school. Um, I often felt like that happened in my own fourth grade classroom. Like my students would come to me fresh out of third grade. They were kind of like, still in the in the you know phase before this cool not cool phase of life but then after a couple months even probably around this time of the school year actually we started to see that where students kind of start to put each other in boxes and kind of label themselves as this kind of student or that kind of student so we really feel passionately about reaching students before that our tagline with our company is like coding is for everyone right it can be for everyone even if your students don't go into a specific career down the road that's coding specific, like all of you or most of you said in the chat, in some extent, students are going to use these skills no matter what career they go into down the road, especially because technology is already such a big part of our lives. That's only going to continue and probably expand. AI is obviously a hot topic right now. So even with that, we know that students will just continue to have this be a part of their lives, their careers, their educational experiences. Um, next, just preparing students for more advanced CS and technology concepts that they will come across as they get older. So like text-based programming, right? If we start students earlier on with block and even a little bit of text-based programming, which we do with our curriculum, it can help set them up for success if and when they go into some of these courses down the road. Um, sometimes we'll speak with districts who have students, you know, required to take, for example, a computer science course in high school or the middle school level or there's some sort of mandate. Um, and if students haven't been exposed to that at all, just the engagement levels aren't really going to be there quite as much if they have never seen this before. And also coding at the secondary level, once it gets a little bit more complex, can obviously be a little bit more intimidating. Next here, just helping students practice those computational thinking skills, which I also noticed in the chat. That can even help them be successful in other subject areas, which in the elementary space is so awesome and influential. Um, we've worked with an educator named Mike Aftal also. He is amazing and um, actually used some of our resources to work with a group of struggling math students in the elementary space. And he actually looked at this group of students and said, you know, these students are struggling with math. I'm not going to bombard them with more and more math concepts and exactly what they're struggling with. I'm going to take a different approach, introduce them to some other concepts through computer science and coding and see if that helps. Spoiler alert, it did. They improve, improved their math scores beyond what we even expected. Um, so I actually linked in a little blog post that we've done about his experiences and also his presentation at ISTE this year, all about that. Totally recommend checking it out. It's really an amazing story and really just helps um, explore how computer science is so helpful in other subject areas and can just help students with those computational thinking skills overall. This next one I really love, um, especially because I feel like nowadays 
all of us, not just our students, but just everybody is constantly consuming technology, whether that be social media, you know, just using it in our day-to-day -day lives for work, personal use, whatever it may be, even just watching the television, right? We're constantly consuming. And it's really important to teach students to not just be consumers of technology, but creators and innovators also. So for example, teaching students how to code using a you know simple HTML skill and building a really simple HTML website is an awesome place to start to show them, hey, you can be a creator as well and don't just have to only consume technology. We touched on this next one a little bit as well already, teaching students how technology works and also helping to teach them how to use it safely is so important and crucial, especially in the elementary space. We know students start to you know, interact with one another a little bit more online, whether they should be at that age or not. Um, sorry, I've got a siren outside my window if you guys can hear that. Um, but just teaching them how to interact with technology safely and be good digital citizens often combines with computer science tech and technology education. And then lastly, introducing students to new, more inspiring career opportunities that allow them to use that knowledge that they've gained in the elementary space down the road to their advantage. There are so many wonderful career opportunities that involve computer science, computational thinking, just technology in general that we really want to give students access to and encourage them to explore. All right, continuing on, I'd love to pose this question again for you to add in the chat. Where do you see computer science fitting into your elementary classroom or even just the elementary classrooms or teachers that you work with, just the elementary space in general? Maybe you feel it fits best into a specific subject area, Maybe you see this as something more done in like a technology sort of STEM specific time with a tech teacher. I'd love to see, you know, what your thoughts are or even how you have been integrating computer science already into the elementary space. So feel free to take a moment and add your thoughts in the chat there. And then we'll actually revisit this question later on after we look into a few different examples and resources. wanting to integrate it into ELA math and library. Hasn't happened, that's all right. All in the beginning phases of this. I know also with the New York Computer Science and Digital Fluency Standards, this year is a little bit more exploratory for a lot of people with full implementation next year. Um, so we know that it's on a lot of people's radars right now, um, and then maybe a little bit more official next year. Library can be everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah, in the district I worked in, it was mainly during library. We had like a maker space time. I often see that in the elementary spaces where it's a little bit more separate, but it's great that some of you guys are saying it's kind of hoping going to be integrated into some other subject areas. Teaching about digital citizenship, research. Yeah. Love this. Yeah, agreed, Margie. Love talking about cross curricular. That's what we'll talk about today. I'll give you some examples of using this in the elementary space in different subject areas specifically. Project-based learning, yeah, absolutely. Ideally adding it into another classroom area, but yeah, I agreed wanting to reduce that stress on a classroom teacher, definitely important and not always easy to do. We know that classroom teachers, there's a lot asked of them. All right, awesome. So it seems like most people kind of see this integrating into other subject areas. Maybe you're just starting in the library space or that's where it's been so far. I love the interest to integrate it into what you are already doing in other subject areas as well. Looking for more buy-in from teachers, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we've seen that support piece and just the user experience piece when introducing different ed tech tools and computer science specifically is very important. Um, like I said, most of the teachers that we work with are completely brand new to computer science. We've had, for example, a teacher who was previously only teaching choir and was kind of voluntold to teach Python in the future. So 
he's been having a great experience with, with Skillshook, but we know and, and have seen, you know, that stress and fear come across for when this is added on to teacher's plates. And it's something that's, that's very, very new, especially in the elementary space when teachers are already asked to cover so much in, in so many different areas um, and subject areas as well. Awesome. Well, we'll re revisit that question, like I said, once we take a look at a few different examples here. So today I focus mainly on just in one activity that I'll give you an example of in math, in science, in ELA, and then also kind of a more SEL based activity that I'll give you um, some resources for a, a fun unplugged activity. So we'll take a look at a few examples on the platform, talk through these resources, and then, like I said, I'll give you some time to explore a playground link that we have so you can actually play around with these tools yourself, share out that link, practice some coding yourself if you're curious. So first we'll start with math. So all the screenshots that you see in my presentation here are just from our Skillstruck platform itself. Um, all of these activities won't necessarily be active on the playground link I share with you today, but if you want more access to some of these activities, you can always create your own demo account or a free for classroom account that will have some activities that you can use with students. I'll share all of that information at the end of my presentation here. So first, this is a first grade example, integrating math into computer science. So this little challenge here, we call these scenes, the scene is called Cake Bakers, and I am being asked as a student to code sprites to model this word problem specifically. Now, I chose this specific example with math because one, I often feel like people think about computer science and math as connecting pretty strongly, um, but also because I don't know about you guys, but when I was teaching, word problems were kind of like the bane of my existence. Like it was always just really, really difficult to get my students to slow down and to not want to just solve a word problem super quick or by rote memorization, like they're used to solving some other math problems, but really get them to stop, think, visualize, and take their time with word problems. They were just always the most challenging. So I would always love any way to make them a little bit more engaging and also just give a way to, you know, encourage my students to slow down and really think through the problem before just guessing at an answer. Um, so the first step that I always told my students when completing a word problem was draw a picture. Um, you know, visualization in general, but specifically I said, get out your little whiteboard, get out your piece of paper and draw a picture of what's going on in the word problem. And oftentimes that really, really helped them to actually figure out what's going on in the problem and recognize that it's a problem that they really did know how to do. So yes, like Margie said, students can pick their own character and create scenes like that. Oh, my screen went out. Can you guys still see it? Maybe it's because I didn't move my, hmm. Okay, some people can see it. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know, Margie. So like Margie said, students can choose their own characters, like I've chosen a couple here. And I built out this little scene to show that one of my characters baked four cakes, one of them baked seven, and then I'm trying to figure out how many um, they baked all together. So once students click play on this specific scene, these cakes would move over to the right and then they would be all together in one to show me that they baked 11 cakes all together. Oh, I see some of them are, someone said that they're lagging a little bit. Yeah, sorry, Angelo, we'll see. Please let me know if there's, if everybody's having similar problems. Could be my Wi-Fi. seems stable right now, but please let me know. So this is just one example of getting students to interact a little bit more with their word problem and also teaching them some basic block-based coding skills where they actually have to drag and drop to move these cakes from one end of the screen to another, build out those little instructions for their computer while also helping them figure out the answer to this specific word problem in math specifically. Now we have cross-curricular in all of our grade levels on our platform specifically. This is just one example of a math problem. We could jump into so many more. Um, but this is a great one that I think is, is a really nice way to introduce math with computer science and also just something that we know, you know, oftentimes can be a struggle, word problems specifically. 
All right, second example here is science. So I bumped us up to fifth grade here and gave an example of integrating science and computer science in the fifth grade level. So this is actually using the HTML coding language. So a little bit different than our last scene. You might have noticed in the first grade world of things, we have just some very basic block-based coding to introduce students to computer science. Whereas here, students can actually choose if they want to use blocks or in the bottom right-hand corner of this picture here, they can use text to build out, in this case, a very simple little website using HTML. So in this example, students are being asked to think of six examples of cons consumers and then use header tags to list out their examples and then additionally style them different colors. So again, just a really more engaging way to get students to think about those new vocabulary words that they're using, interact with them a little bit. And then I added in this extension activity idea discussing how producers, consumers, and decomposers play an important role in a healthy ecosystem, and then have students take this a step further to create a simple website, explaining the importance of and difference between all three of those in the playground that I'll give access to you all to at the end today. So just a really nice way, again, to add engagement to a more basic, maybe science activity or lesson creating a website about what they have learned instead of just having students, you know, create a simple slides presentation or something that they're maybe more used to doing in general. Um, so yeah, like Margie said, students can actually flip between blocks and text in order to challenge themselves a little bit. And this way they actually get introduced to this text-based programming at a younger age than they would with a lot of other tools. And we found again, that that makes that transition into middle or high school a lot less intimidating because they've already at least seen what that text-based programming side is going to look like instead of having it be kind of this shock when they go into the secondary grades. This also syncs. So if I do some of my coding with the text and some of my coding with the blocks, it's actually going to sync so that I can access and use either one um, and kind of flip between the two. All right, third example here is ELA. Um, I use a fourth grade example for this. Like I said, I taught fourth grade. And um, another thing that was always a really big struggle was helping my students come up with um, engaging and exciting and unique um, titles for their essays that they created. Um, we often did this at like the end of our unit, for example, with like narrative writing. Um, we would come up with a title at the end once they had written their or their entire essay. And in this case, Instead of just having students pick a title and slap it on their essay, they're going to create three simple header tags, really simple and basic activity for some text-based and block-based coding opportunities in the fourth grade space. Um, and it says you here even remember to make your titles exciting so people will want to read what you've written. I also add this extension activity that I think would be really fun to rank their titles from the least to their most favorite using the different header levels here to make one biggest and one smallest. You can even have students walk around the room and maybe vote using post-it notes, looking at each other's screens to see which title they liked the best or the least, and then challenge students to adjust the size of their header tags as a little extension activity from there as well. And then also, if you wanted to take that even a step further, students can add color, even font to their header tags, kind of like what we saw in the science activity there, and just explore and really make this their own. Um, I know my a lot of my students really loved um, creating different like slides presentations in Google Docs when they were able to type up their essays after they finished writing them out. So how fun and engaging would it be to actually create a little website, even be able to add images and photos that way to showcase all of their hard work. All right. Lastly, I wanted to add in a unplugged activity because I know that it's not always something that, you know, we want to have students sitting on their device all day. Students are already on their devices a lot throughout the day. So within our curriculum, we have a lot of unplugged activities. Um, but this is one of my favorite activities for introducing computer science and coding to students at the elementary grade level. Um, coding can be challenging. It's definitely not the easiest experience for all students to grasp, especially if they haven't been learning it from grades kindergarten or you know early elementary in general. 
it can be really challenging to introduce to students. So this activity year is all about growth mindset. And I'll give you some scenario cards that you can use, you can print off and use in your classrooms as an unplugged activity as well. Um, but in this case, students are kind of identifying whether or not our little skill struck blobs here are um, handling situations in a constructive way or not a constructive way and talking through how they can improve that growth mindset piece. So just a few steps to this activity. I won't go over everything super far in depth because if you want to use this, you can of course read through everything more in depth on your own. Um, but first teaching students what having a growth mindset is. So I'm sure you all know this already from your experiences in education, but of course just believing in the power of yourself, your brain, knowing that even when something is difficult or challenging, that truly is just gonna help us continue to grow and learn. Like I said, computer science isn't always easy. Um, just like any other subject area we want to teach students that even if they make a mistake, it's important to have that growth mindset, go back and try. Um, a big part of coding is debugging, right? And finding those little errors. And even if you're super experienced with coding, there's always going to be bugs and things that you have to go back and fix and change um, and collaborate with others on to help you. So you can create a list of sentence stems, for example, to promote having a growth mindset in your classroom on an anchor chart, as example. And then you can use these scenario cards on the next slides for students to read through the cards, decide whether or not that blob, it's just our little skill trick mascot, kind of silly. Um, if that blob is demonstrating a growth mindset, if the answer is no, talk through what they can do to change that talked about their you know, response and their thoughts in a group, and then read the next scenario and continue on. So I won't read through all of these today, but you have access to these slides, of course, so you're welcome to print out these slides, cut these up, maybe have each of a different station or group of tables for students to read through and, and uh, rotate between. So just one as an example, the second one here in the middle, Yellow blob is coding with text-based HTML for the very first time, which if you're using our resources, for example, students would be introduced to that at an elementary age level. It's very challenging and they can't find the bug in their code. They can't find their error and they say, this is just too hard. So talk through with your students as the yellow blob demonstrating growth mindset. What could they change? You know, what could they say instead? This green example shows a great example of a blob demonstrating growth mindset by saying, you know, mistakes help me learn, removing their code, starting fresh, and just teaching students, like Margie said, those perseverance skills. It's great in any subject area, but especially when introducing coding to students and making sure that all students understand that coding can be for them, even if they need to, you know, make changes, go back, try again. That really is just part of the process. Couple more scenarios on this slide. I love the idea to create your own as a class, even maybe based on what students have experienced as they start out coding for the first time. Discussing this as a class after students complete that unplugged activity. And then if students do have access to Skillstruck or our code playground or anything that they can use to code on their own device, logging into that and actually having students just play around and practice and talking through revisiting that um, idea of a growth mindset to make sure students are pushing themselves and also understanding that just mistakes and making errors is going to be part of that process. All right, so revisiting this question from earlier, I'd love to hear if anyone's perspective has changed, if any of these activity, activities or ideas kind of spoke to you or you could see students you know, really enjoying some of these activities in a certain subject area, or really just any thoughts before we jump in to some of the resources that I'll share and allow you guys to explore today. Crickets, crickets. Maybe everybody's ready for something a little bit more interactive. <laughs> I know it is Friday. Let's see, Friday morning still for you all. Friday morning for me as well. Word problems, growth mindset. Absolutely, yeah. We've all seen, especially in the elementary space, students getting so discouraged when they make a mistake. 
can be really hard. And I love even just doing this activity as a class and talking about this as a group, right? Like something I always introduce to my students at the very beginning of the year was like, we are working together as a class. And even if someone makes a mistake, like having that conversation about how, you know, we can just work together to push through those things and work together to help each other, continue to grow and learn that everybody makes mistakes. Those conversations are so important to have, especially when introducing something like computer science. I love it. Thank you, Margaret, for sharing that. All right, great. Well, feel free to add anything else to the chat as you see fit. Now we will have a little bit of time to explore. So I am going to share this playground link out with you all. I'm just going to click on it real quick here so you can, or actually I'll just have you guys, I'll type this into the chat. Woohoo. I'm going to share this link. Feel free. If you got the slides, you can just click right into it, or you can go to this link once I send it in the chat here. Let me know if you have any issues. It'll just ask for a few pieces of information from you there. And then, oops, I think I forgot a slash there. That might not work. Hang on. Oh, actually, I think that will. Margie, will you confirm that that link works on your end when I sent in the chat? Where you can type it directly into your browser. Okay, perfect. So go ahead and click on that from the chat or type it in. Once you access that, and like I said, I gave a little disclaimer at the bottom here. Our platform is entirely web-based, so it'll work on any device you'll be able to access this in the most effective way on a computer or tablet. So um, if you go on it on your phone, the experience just won't be quite as good because it's just meant to be viewed on a bigger screen. So definitely go on on your computer. Um, that's probably best. And this link, I have it at the top on this slide here in case you didn't grab it yet. It'll just ask you to enter in your first and last name, the language that you'd like to learn in, your email, and the name of your school and district. And this link will actually be active for you guys to use through October 13th. So feel free to share it out with any other educators, anybody interested, they can play around with this. Totally awesome um, if you want to share and you know just explore any of these resources on your own a little bit further in depth as well. So what this is going to bring you to is into our code playground for Launchpad. Launchpad is our K through five content. And this is just a very small chunk of all of the different content that we offer on the Skillstruck platform, of course. So our actual resources are much more robust and in depth for this playground. We'll give you just a little bit of a, a feel for some of the different tools and things that we offer in the elementary space and a really nice place to just play around and explore yourself. So I put a few different suggestions and ideas if you'd like a more guided experience. We've got about 20 minutes. We'll come back together with about five minutes left just to wrap up and um, share out some additional information and links and things like that for you guys to um, reach out or follow up or just have some more resources in your tool belt. Um, but I gave a few ideas here if you'd like a more structured experience. If not, feel free to just play around with it practice coding yourself, um, be creative, have fun. As I show in some of these pictures here, we have some blocks playgrounds available. Um, those are great places to go to just create and explore without any specific requirements. Um, you can complete the lesson that pops up right when you log into your account. Um, you can complete some challenges. I love the fonts, sentences about me. That's a great like icebreaker beginning of year. I know we're past the beginning of the school year now, but um, still always fun to do a few, a little about me activities um, to help students get to know and connect with one another. Um, or I also, I'm a big reader. So I love um, the idea of creating like a book review website using HTML through our code playground there that you can see I circled on the slide. So feel free to play around. Use the chat if you have any questions um, or any thoughts or anything that you found that is particularly fun or interesting to you that you want to share out. And then we'll come back together in about 10, 15 minutes here after you've had some time to explore. All right. I will take a break from talking now because I've been talking at you guys the whole time.
Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, everybody. I know we still have a little bit more time, but just wanted to come back. If anybody wants to share about anything that they created, feel free to share in the chat um, what you were able to accomplish. I know we only had a little bit of time, but hopefully you were able to explore, have some fun, nice little hands-on activity for this morning. You are all probably ready for lunch. <laughs> I'm in Chicago, so I'm an hour earlier than you guys, but I know you'll, you're probably ready to keep going with your day. I just wanted to point out a few things on this next slide here. Um, I included the link to these slides in case you didn't get it from earlier. There are a few different things that you can access here as well. So you've got your playground link from today that you were just on, or maybe are still playing around on. You can, of course, contact me anytime. Great question, Margaret. Okay, so your playground link that we had today, that'll just be active through October 13th. So you and anybody else that you share it with can access it and use that link through October 13th. If you'd like to create a free account, you can do that through this second link on my slide here, skillstruck.com slash classroom. That is our free version of our platform. So it has a chunk of activities and lessons for all grade levels. You can enroll up to 120-ish students on that platform. So if you'd like to um, create a free account and use our resources that way with students, use that skillstruck.com slash classroom. And um, like I said, you can use that playground link that you were just on today. Just to, It's kind of just like a more condensed version so that you can um, just look at some of the tools in a smaller way at first. No problem, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hopefully you guys were able to get a little feel for some different activities, some inspiration, or learn some new coding skills yourself. If you want to um, get a full demo presentation of all of our resources, like I said, we are K through 12. We also recently launched a new AI solution as a safe alternative to chat GPT. Um, I know that's a huge buzzword right now. I am happy to share about that. It's called chat for schools. You can also learn more about it at chat. I'll send this in the chat, <laughs> chatforschools.com. Um, we are working on getting that added to our BOCES contract currently. So we anticipate that if all goes well, it'll hopefully be added within the next month or so um, as just another part of our platform. So our full resources are a paid subscription. Happy to share more about that as well. If you go to this request a full demo page, it'll essentially just take you to schedule some time with me. Um, so you're welcome to contact me anyway, whatever's easiest. And if you are ever in need of any other resources, tools, are curious about our events, anything like that, please feel free to reach out. Um, something we love to do with districts are free code events. So if you want one of us to come to your district and put on a little code night or code event for your students, staff, parents, community, anything, um, we're happy to do that. We do that for free. It's a really great way to engage your community in computer science and coding and just get them on board with, you know, computer science in general as you guys approach and address the new standards. So I'm happy to do that. Happy to come and present, um, interact with students, anything that you guys would like, we are happy to help with. And feel free to reach out to me anytime. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let you guys go a little bit early so you can go grab some lunch before you come back for the rest of the sessions 